today I'm celebrating 50 videos. And I'm gonna hand me a little lint ball. So to celebrate the 50 videos, I thought I'd make this today all about my entry into being a YouTube creator. So what I did was I wrote a list of 50 things uh, you can do to be a vlogger and what I've learned along the way. So I'm going to read them out. Um, and I will try and elaborate, but I'm going to be quite quick because I don't want this to be the longest video ever. Let's start. First thing is actually just start. You have a voice, use it, get a camera, point it at yourself, start talking at that camera and start publishing some videos. You just have to start. There's never going to be the right time, a good time. There's always just going to be now. So just do it. Number two is you're telling stories. It's the setting. It's the friction. It's the resolution. It's a classic storytelling um, process. Then, uh, yeah. This is a, a personal thing. I started making videos because I was terribly uncomfortable um, in front of a camera and I watched Jamie Newberry, who's somebody who's in the design industry and she spoke about these challenges that she gave herself and one of them was uh, making videos and I was inspired by that. So thank you, Jamie. And uh, yeah. I decided to start recording myself so that I could start feel, feeling more comfortable in front of a camera. I've still got a long way to go, but listen, everybody feels uncomfortable in front of the camera. Lots of people are introverted, but they're extroverted. Just do it. You will become more comfortable and confident speaking in front of a camera. <laughs> this one, I think Peter McKenna said it best, your first few vlogs are gonna suck. Well, I've made 50 of them and while I'm proud of the progress that I'm making, honestly, I still feel like they suck. Maybe the first 100 will suck. Eventually, I'll like find my rhythm and I'll be putting these masterpieces out, but it's okay. Everybody sucks. All right, go towards the light. What I mean by this is try and find natural light, Put your face towards it. You don't want to have that like split face. I'm sure I've got like 30 or 40 videos where I've got like a line here. It's dark here. It's light here. Face the light as much as possible. Lighting is crucially important during video production. Okay. The next thing is audio quality over image quality. And what I mean by that is it's better to have a good sounding video than it is to have a super quality picture in your videos. So if you're going to spend money on anything and if you're going to put effort into something, put effort into the audio. People can watch a black screen and as long as the audio is good, they'll be captivated. But if people are just looking at an amazing image and they have this fuzzy voice in the background, it's never going to work. So best thing you can do, invest in a mic and um, make sure that your audio quality is there. Okay. Use the camera you have. Don't worry about owning expensive gear and not having anything. I record on an iPhone 99% of the time because I simply either don't have a camera on me or I'm not good at using the cameras I have. So the iPhone is the one thing I always have on me. And so I record all my episodes on that. Sure, it can be better, but better to have recorded something with what you have 
than to have not recorded it because you didn't have the gear you needed. From everything I've read, and I stand to be corrected, but the average video length on YouTube is actually four minutes and 21 seconds. And there's a guy who actually does all of his videos that are four minutes and 21 seconds. But I'm gonna contradict myself a little bit later. Okay, you don't have to post daily. I think YouTube used to want people to put out videos daily and I think it increased your ranking and everything in the algorithm. That's no longer the case and you simply don't have to put that much pressure on you. Never mind like that it doesn't make you pop and all those things. It goes and hurts your creativity to constantly have that anxiety about filming and editing a video. These things take time and quality videos take even longer. It's better to have quality over quantity. So furthering what I'd said in the previous um, thing is make sure that you make quality movies. You know, write a good script or at least an outline for what you want to produce. Record that in the best way possible, in the most original way possible. Go and edit it correctly and put it out. Don't just keep putting out shitty videos. While it's not the end of the world because I've seen some really like tacky videos do really well, I would recommend if I had a choice as a creator and as a designer and everything, quantity uh, is not gonna trump quality. It's always quality over quantity. Okay, you must get your audio levels to be consistent across your video and across your videos and to the same level that all the other videos on YouTube are at. So I will link down below. I actually have a preset that you can download and you can use. I did a tutorial. I would probably be less likely to find that tutorial to share with you, but you can literally copy this into your presets folder, drag and drop, and it'll actually get all of your audio levels to be the, at the same place, which means that when you speak, it all sounds consistent. People aren't grabbing the remote control, having to bump up um, the audio just to be able to hear you speak. Okay. Color grading is a great way to get that cinematic, consistent feel and theme and atmosphere to your your videos, I would highly recommend that you invest in buying some LUTs if you don't know how to color correct perfectly and you can really pick up some cool things. I've overdone it, so don't overdo it, but certainly uh, you can buy these LUT packs and they really do add um, some beautiful uh, effects to your, your videos. So as I said, I'm gonna contradict myself five to seven minute video from everything I've researched is the perfect length for YouTube. Other platforms, I think it's like LinkedIn, 10 minutes works. Facebook has a different time and so on. Apparently YouTube from everything I've looked into because I really have been trying to find the perfect formula, it's five to seven. I honestly, 50 videos later, still can't seem to hit that sweet spot, but I'm getting there. Okay, next thing is you are you. You're not Casey, you're not Peter McKinnon, you're not Louis, you're not Dan Mays. You are you, so be you. You're authentic, you're unique, you're your own style, your own truth. So just be you on camera, be uniquely you. So you, be you, boo. Montages help tell the story, but they're not the story. Sure, if you do montages as your business, sure, you can show those off, but they're in a video on YouTube. They're only part of filling the gap, taking you from this point to this point. It's kind of the in-between bit, kind of like B-roll, um, but yeah, you know, those 
kind of mishmashes that snatch type effect uh, you shouldn't just do a video of montages I think my first video might have been like that so don't do it <laughs> this I think I've heard Casey say this which is nobody cares about your drone footage again it's just filler content to take you from there to there to set up a scene whatever but to have an entire video of drone footage unless you are DJI who are showing you the beautiful stuff that they can capture on a drone don't fill your video just with drone footage it's the filler stuff good for b-roll okay the next tip i've seen a couple of really great creators peter mckinnon's got a great video and like all things in that i'm talking about i'll make sure i put links below but use your camera to create whips I think Jesse Driftwood, he's recently done something where he shows that almost every single shot he does, he uses a camera to create the whips and the zooms and everything else. And then in post, he just kind of puts those together. So, you know, you don't need fancy plugins to do all of those things. You really need to think about what your shots are and how you, you do things. That's the next thing is plan your shots. So the idea is this, you want to shoot what's ahead of you. What you want to do is check that out, get that into frame, set your lighting, take your camera and whip into that frame and whip out of it. Then your next shot, oh, I want that. Again, follow the pattern and keep everything moving fluidly. So, get yourself a microphone. Well, I'm not having a great deal of luck with my Shure Lightning um, microphone for my iPhone. There are other microphones and I'm going to look into those. But you want something, I think they call it a shotgun mic or something like that. But something that is kind of in your face. I mean, you do shots like this, you actually uh, have that mic directly. Uh, pointing at you, you will get much better sound even from far away than if you just use the on-device microphones. B-roll is just filler stuff to tell a story, set a scene, stuff like that. B-roll again, same as drone footage, all these things. B-roll is just there as an in-between thing. That's not the video. While I would highly recommend making the investment in really good lighting, um, there are a lot cheaper solutions. I think there's a video where Peter McKinnon visits Casey and he literally has a piece of paper towel over one of his lights because he doesn't have uh, any sort of screen in front there. And that's just a hack. You can buy cheap lighting, um, get some cloth over it and you'll get a softer light. There's all sorts of things, but you don't need fancy equipment, but it is worth getting a nice light that's on you. So you have consistent lighting because often daylight doesn't always um, play by your rules. And so you've probably got to invest in some good lighting at some point, but you know, there are some great hacks out there. Just go search YouTube and you'll find some amazing solutions. Okay, I've definitely been caught out with this. I made an, an entire video once where I thought uh, I could record these amazing locations because I wasn't going to be there again. And unfortunately, I had about three minutes worth of battery life. And so I actually couldn't record anything and often devices haven't even been recording so charge your devices before you leave make sure you've got power banks make sure that all the other devices that have been lying around are charged don't assume that they're charged okay whenever you're shooting something get a thumbnail shot i often forget to do this and i end up having to find a shot within my video 
and I kind of use that. And the truth is, I don't have the best thumbnails. It's again, one of those things that I'm working on. But if you can, get the thumbnail shot. Get something unique. I saw a guy the other day who was outside 368 in New York, and he made sure to do his classic jump in the air, which uh, was what he used for his thumbnail. So just make sure you always do something cool for your thumbnail. And the next thing that I would recommend is that you collaborate. There are probably YouTubers everywhere. And it's probably a pretty good idea that if you go visit a city, you email a few kind of big YouTubers and ask them if they'd be interested in hanging out and collaborating and telling them what you do and what they do and what your interests are and things like that. And hopefully somebody will buy it back home, make sure that you start talking to the local YouTubers. You know, here in South Africa, there's not a huge amount of YouTubers, but I think it's worth finding out who they are and trying to collaborate together because there are all sorts of benefits. It's not just about what you can get from them, it's what they can get from you, and it'll just make your content better, help you grow your network, and it's always just fun to do things with other people. I often get quite jealous when I see, um, okay, let me not say jealous. I quite often get quite inspired when I see a lot of these creators out and about together and they're actually filming each other and they swap footage. So you actually go and get a shot of yourself instead of just what you're shooting or a selfie shot. So the next thing is use a tripod. Nobody likes constant shaking of video. So while there is definitely, it's a great technique to go and film yourself in selfie mode and or turn your camera around, whatever, and have that motion because it does create the drama and everything else. You cannot take every shot like that. The shakiness actually makes people uncomfortable and they'll turn off the videos. So definitely get a tripod, shoot some beautiful shots. Peter McKinnon makes these amazing videos where he shoots coffee. They like him making coffee. And you know, what he suggests about making any uh, video interesting is to actually shoot from different angles. So I would encourage you to kind of get different shots that other people don't think of. Just try it, just try getting low, just come from the side, shoot from above. But all these unique angles can really make a difference to your footage. I could definitely use this and that is show your energy. Like I often come across, I'm in the morning, I'm tired, I'm like shooting, it just doesn't seem like I'm a very exciting guy. Where is it? You spend time with me you're gonna know that I've got heaps of energy and it's contagious and it's comical and it's fun. And on camera, because I'm not a performer, it seems like I have low energy sometimes. And the truth is I have tons of energy. And when I'm talking about something that I'm passionate about, I light up. So talk about things you're passionate about, show people that amazing energy, do your thing, chicken wing give your viewers a reason to watch your video or to continue watching your video. So what I mean by this is make sure that from the time they click, you tell people or you give people a compelling reason to keep watching your video. They took the time to click, which is great. Respect them enough to say, Hey, this is what you're going to get out of this video. Now, then go and tell your story. I think, too often I've done this where you actually start going into your story without any context, without anything, and the drop off rate is quite high. I think if you tell people why they're there and what they're going to watch, they'll be more likely to stay. It's okay to ask people to subscribe to your channel and like your videos. While I don't get paid right now, I am trying to grow my audience. I think people have got, people would be able to learn from me. So the more that I can spread the love and 
so on, then I'm doing what I'm trying to do out of this and I do need your help. And the more you like and the more you subscribe, the more my, the, the better chance I have of my videos being watched um, and getting picked up by YouTube's algorithm. While I say that, please like this video, subscribe, and hey, leave a comment. Cameras allow you to film up um, at really high frame rates these days, so you can do some amazing slow-mo footage. Don't kill it, but you can certainly use um, slow-mo in your B-roll, and it's a fantastic way to really create drama and depth to the emotions and the things that you're doing in that moment. Don't worry about monetizing your channel. If you're gonna earn money off it, it will come. The first thing that you need to do is tell great stories, captivate people's imagination, get more and more viewers watching your content, enjoying your content, things like that because monetizing your YouTube channel is not the only way to make money. You could be doing something unique enough or special enough that a sponsor or viewers or a brand or something might pick up on and offer you way more cash than you could ever earn sticking ads all over your YouTube videos. The next thing is off the back of my last video is brand your channel. Get a, a header for your channel page. Find some sort of font that you can use. You know, find a consistent voice that you can put across. Find a format. But those are all ways of branding your channel. Get on that. Keep working on that. Make it uniquely you. You are a brand. Don't overproduce. Another kind of example of this is Peter McKinnon has gone in, into Africa. He forms the most epic stuff, I think in Uganda or something, edits it to death, puts it on in a video where he's either just sitting in front of the camera or he is chasing a lemon around town gets more likes and more viewership than his documented video um, in Africa. On YouTube, people don't seem to want it. Camera bodies and things like that don't matter nearly as much as lenses do. If you're gonna spend money on something, they're worth the investment because they last a really long time, but buy great quality lenses. And I even have great lenses for my iPhone. So definitely invest in them. They will change the production of your videos. Something overlooked by a lot of people is sound effects. So add sound effects to create atmosphere, to tell a better story, to give your um, videos personality. Because quite often you can't hear the rain in the background or you can't even though you're seeing somebody write, it just doesn't come across very well. It's pretty flat. So a good thing to do is to always just have a handwriting, a scribble of somebody taking notes as a sound effect, scraping, hooters, things like that. That adds so much more depth to your videos. Create a conversation with your users and ask them to comment below. Ask them questions. This is a conversation. What do you think of these great sneakers here? Do you like this top or do you like that top? What, which do you use? This software or that software? Let me know in the comments below. Engage with people, interact with them, reply to their comments. Give them a thumbs up. There's a little heart, give them some love. But definitely invite people to continue the conversation in the comments. All these amazing effects that you see in videos, zooming, flipping, 
swiping, things like that, you can buy these effects. You don't have to become some fancy after effects like Ninja. You can buy these drag and drop and the effect um, will kick in. So spend a little money buying that instead of wasting time trying to do that effect unless you're really into it. But I would say just buy the plugin. That's what most people are probably doing. Okay. Don't use too many effects. Don't bombard your videos with zooming and swishing and everything else. It just gets a bit much. There are some guys who do some magic out there and the wizardry is just amazing. But, you know, I think that it can be overkill and worst of all, it will eat up your rendering time and it can cause all sorts of things. I've put on lots of effects rendered out and then it does these horrific things to my video and I have to go back and try and fix it and it's gone and screwed up everything. So don't use too many of them. Use them where they would enhance your video beautifully and elegantly. It's my 2019 word, by the way. Do everything elegantly. I would encourage you to upload consistently. Be it once a week, be it three times a week, be it every day. Try and be consistent with making videos. Don't do what I've done, which is go all out for a few months and then disappear for a few more months and then try and come back. Your kind of viewership will have dropped You've probably lost subscribers. You're certainly not going to get as many likes. And so I would encourage you to be consistent as much as possible so that you can keep your viewership and keep people entertained. This period now over December has been torture for me. Understandably, people are on holiday. They're having a break. They don't want to vlog. They don't want to make videos they don't want to be shooting all the time they want to eat christmas lunch with their family and open get without having a camera in their face i get it this is the exception be consistent throughout the year add music to your videos nothing will create an atmosphere or a vibe quicker than adding some catchy music or some dramatic music. This is a must have. YouTube offer tons of music that they've licensed that you can use. There's free music out there if you just look for it. I subscribe at Epidemic Sound. I'm not being paid to say that. I literally just use their product. It's awesome. Some of the best tracks that I've ever found are from there. Please add some music to your videos. There's nothing more boring than 10 minutes of somebody just talking to the camera. Put a little music. The next thing I put down is find your voice. Find what it is about you that makes you a special. I for a long time did vlogs that were all about my daily life and things like that. So the truth is it doesn't suit me. But you know what I really do enjoy and you know what I'm really good at? I'm good at design. I'm good at leading creatives. I'm good at finding interesting stuff. And I guess I'm uniquely interesting in a certain kind of way. You've got to combine all those things and have your niche. GoPros are great for action shots, but they're more than that. They're these tiny little devices and you can kind of put them anywhere. You can put them inside a plant, you can put them at the bottom of a mug. GoPros are not just for action shots. You don't have a GoPro <laughs> and 
uh, you should really think about getting a gimbal. Gimbals will give you great cinematic shots and shots you just won't get holding a camera with just a tripod. Um, these gimbals also come with some really great features, hyperlapse features and they can lock on objects and follow objects smoothly. I have the Osmo 2 which is for my iPhone and while I haven't learned to use it properly I'm excited to use it this year to really create some magic shots. When you edit you use music and time your cuts to that music. You want things to sound rhythmic. You don't just want a whole lot of videos that are just like da 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 Actually even that sounded too rhythmic. Da 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 Like that. You want it to sound dun 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 Pop 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 You want that kind of beat going on and you know you, you want a rhythm to telling stories not just like this constant shouting and cut, 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 and it's not going to anything. Music's doing this, cuts are doing that. Time them. I didn't know this for the longest time and it, I was getting frustrated. You must export from Premiere or Final Cut Pro as H.264 for the best video for YouTube. I just want to tell you you can make videos with a smartphone. I use my iPhone. I've used it 99% of the time that I make videos. I'm not saying that my videos are the best, but they had such great video quality in them. They arguably can do just as good as good of a shot as most point and shoot cameras out there so you can make videos with your smartphone. Something I've recently discovered because I have a lot of videos that kind of bright on off on off all the time. Most cameras have a way of adjusting the exposure but they also have a way of setting the, expo the exposure. So when you're about to film set your exposure and Point your camera where you're going to go and then you can go sit in front of your camera and actually shoot. Um, that way you won't have this constant change which I think I might have got because I'm realizing now in saying that, which is an epic fail, uh, I probably didn't set my exposure. The next thing is use a wind damper on the microphone that you're carrying around with you when you go outdoors to stop the wind. I think it's called a wind muff or a wind damper or something like that, but it's a big furry thing. I've got a little wind damper on my cannon, which I call Mr. T because it's like a little mohawk that goes over the onboard mic, but you can get them for your, your microphones and they will make a world of them. You don't know that the whole time that you are doing things. None of that. In the design community, quite often people have imposter syndrome. And something that I hear constantly with video creators is that they're just not that interesting. It's okay, none of us are just that interesting. It's what we do, where we are, how we tell a story, things like that. JC Driftwood, Thought he wasn't interesting, didn't think he had any value as a video maker. And he did the same walk every day where he walked under this line and he made the most amazing videos that just captivated everybody's imagination on Instagram. So I would encourage you, you are interesting. And that's it, number 50. So my 50th tip is this. Make content you want to watch. Just think about that. Make the stuff you would like to see on a screen based on who you are, what you have to offer, and just put it out there. See what happens. Cool. So that's my 50, um, 
things that I would recommend right now. I could keep going as I was talking. I kept thinking of more and more things. Maybe I'll make another video another day. Here's to another 50 more videos. The next time that I do one of these will be my 100th video. I'm hoping by that point I at least have 100 subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe below. Hit the bell so that you will be notified when I drop another video. But yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment and stay cool.